Welcome to Second Take, the show that looks at the issues behind the news. All public comments on the updated integrated resource plan need to be submitted to the Department of Energy. Terence Kremer joins me to discuss some of the feedback that government is likely to receive on the plan. Hi Terence. Firstly, what is the IRP, why are the updates needed, and what are some of the highlights of the updates? Well, the plan's really a generation or power generation roadmap for South Africa for the period from 2010 to 2030. So we're not overhauling uh, and starting again in terms of the, the roadmap because we have one that's in place, that's been in place really since 2011. And we um, are looking at updating it in terms of the new context. So the big um, theme or the big overarching um, issue that needs to be understood is what is our demand trajectory looking like for power? And we had a certain uh, demand outlook um, in 2010, but the econo economic conditions and uh, the market has changed quite substantially since then, mostly because of the much slower economic growth in the South African economy. But also there's been the lack of electricity, so we've had uh, some demand suppression. So the IRP really updates that figure in terms of how much demand are we expecting over the coming 20-year period. And now, they're now basing it on the aspirational growth target of 5.4% in the National Development Plan. We know we're nowhere near that. <coughs> we're closer to the 2% level. And it's, we're looking at 2.7% yearly uh, power demand growth over that period. Again, uh, that's a, a figure based on um, the NDP and a differential as they assume it between what electricity demand growth will be versus economic growth. So that was really the need that was driving the update. There was a need to update it because we have a different demand scenario and demand outlook in the country. So that's, that's where we're at. A new plan has come up. The highlights of the plan are really <coughs> far less nuclear, less coal, uh, running the Eskom fleet more in line with what the actual reality is rather than what the last IRP expected, which was a higher aspiration, and having more solar, less wind, and more gas. So that's really, in a, in a nutshell, what the latest update, and I must stress, it's, it's a draft. It's not a final document. Um, it, it puts art into the public domain, and we're now in a public comment phase. And what type of feedback is government likely to receive on the draft update? <coughs> well, I think every sort of subsector with energy is going to be looking at the plan quite closely. The, the headline issue has really been the nuclear issue. A lot of the reportage last year was about getting ready, preparing the South African environment, the construction industry, for a massive nuclear build program. And there have been a lot of concerns about that program in terms of the cost. And what the updated RP says is that instead of adding 9,600 megawatts of new nuclear by um, uh, 2030, we will be looking at a, a much reduced goal. Um, and so with, uh, together with Kuba, which is around over the 1,000 megawatt level, we'll have about 6,660 megawatts by 2030. However, as an added caveat, and that's that the nuclear build must meet a $6,500 per kilowatt price cap. And uh, that, that, that caveat is now something that the nuclear industry, as well as government, will have to see, assess ahead of any bidding process, whether that is actually a practical cap. <coughs> so that's taken the headlines, and there have been responses all around, around the nuclear. But there have also been differing views on the demand outlook, that 2.7% that I mentioned. Some are saying, but we know we near that. In fact, we, we're falling. Our demand uh, uh, at the moment is back to 2006 type levels. We, but we have other, the others are saying, but it's unoptimistic, and it's uh, it really takes into account what is being termed suppressed demand because Eskom has been forced to suppress demand through buybacks, through demand side management, through load shedding at that point because of the, the frailties and the tightness of the system. <coughs> so there's very divergent views uh, on the issue of the demand, whether it's too optimistic on the one hand and too pessimistic on the other. And that will be an issue because that really drives the plan, what we think our demand is going to look like. That really drives what sort of capacity you're going to put in to meet that demand. But there are also a range of other issues that are coming forward and government will have to digest. 
from the sort of wind energy grouping saying that you know if you reduce um, the allocation to wind you know there's already been some work around localization around the wind program it was based on at least 8400 megawatts reducing that <coughs> to different level which is what's in the update is going to have implications and they're, they're also saying they feel it's not in line with other policy objectives of government <coughs> especially around localization because it seems to be something of a low-hanging through fruit. Then there's the issue of solar, I think, uh, is the mix between CSP and PV, which is concentrated solar power, which the big advantage there is it comes with storage often, which means that you can run it almost to compete with open cycle gas turbines. Can you, you can store the energy during the day and then release it during the peak periods. <coughs> that, that has been increased quite materially, and PV has also had a slight increase whether that balance is correct. So there's going to be a lot of debates around the solar dimension. And then gas, the, the new target is bigger, over 3,000 megawatts. But it's still, I think in many people's view, is fairly unambitious around gas, especially in the context of massive resources being found in the region and the potential ultimately maybe for shale gas in South Africa. So there's a feeling that you know South Africa needs to be a much more aspirational in the area of gas and get this gas economy going for a number of reasons because it has the advantage of being brought onto the system quite a lot quicker. It, you can maybe convert some of the open cycle diesel generators into closed cycle systems and you could you know scale up the gas economy quite quite quickly but <clears throat> and that's I suppose a view that will be debated and I think there'll be a, a sympathetic ear there just the one area the one area of concern is that some of the gas will probably initially all the gas will have to be imported either from our neighbors or in the form of liquefied uh, natural gas and the issue there is really what's happening with the exchange exchange rate and how are we going to mitigate that uh, exchange rate risk so there, there's going to be a lot for the department of energy to digest all the submissions have to be handed in by the 7th of february and I think they're going to be quite copious volumes that they're going to have to go through and make an, an assessment as to how they adjust the plan. And we'll have to see then uh, what the final document will look like. And what's going to happen once all the comments have been collected and digested by government? Well, I think <coughs> what, what we have in the public domain is that the 7th of February is the, the end date for um, submitting public comments. Uh, there will be a period of digestion and collation. There will then be a period internally in government where you do an um, interdepartmental process of seeing, you know, we're wanting to do this maybe with nuclear, we're wanting to do this with maybe solar or with wind. And um, the, you'll have departments saying that that has implications, whether it's uh, the environmental affairs department or water, saying, well, that has implications for water or the environment. <coughs> that we hadn't been factoring in or the Department of Trade and Industry saying but we've been working on localization in some of these industries say for instance nuclear has really scaled back or wind really scaled down you know there are going to be implications for the localization aspirations the green economy aspirations so there's going to be what they call a policy adjustment phase so you'll look at the what they, the Department of Energy is saying is the energy pl uh, plan and then you'll have input from departments saying that we think there needs to be adjustment here, there and everywhere just to meet some of the policy objectives uh, that might be competing with the energy objectives. Then we'll have a uh, process of cabinet deliberation and cabinet endorsement. And the view is that by March sometime we should have the final RP. And that's quite important for industry because it basically sets in motion what can be you know, uh, realistically implemented in the system. Look, it's a contested terrain. Some people think it's over at central planning gone mad and that there should be a, a much more scope for, you know, private sector to come in with mm, alternative options. But in, in terms of the current framework, the RP is very important because if your technology or your solution is not in the plan, it's a very hard sell, it's hard to get, well, it's almost impossible and the regulators, regulators going to battle to license your project. If your project is allocated for under the different uh, technology headings, then you're more likely to be able to proceed as a producer, whether you're ESKIM or whether you're an RPP. 
So it's a very important document, and that's why I think there's going to be a lot of deliberation and discussion. Whether there's been enough consultation or enough time allocated to allow people to have a bit more input before the final plan, I, th I think is not clear to me. I think given the importance, given that there's some significant changes to the plan, maybe there should have been a bit more time allocated. On the other hand, we can't wait forever. We need some certainty and we need to get going because these will, these will shape the determinations that come out around how uh, government procures the next rounds of renewables, the next rounds of base loads, and uh, we need to have that certainty, I suppose, sooner rather than later. That was the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.